Your Massachusetts real estate market update for October 3rd, 2022, as well as the entire month of September. So what are we going to chat about? Single family homes and condo data. We, as always, we're going to look at it for the week data, but we're also going to take a look at all of September's data and see what happened in the month of September from a year over year and a month over a month analysis. We're going to talk about interest rates because a lot's happened here. We've finally seen some relief in those interest rates, but there is some really, really, really big macroeconomic news that we just need to chat about because it's going to affect you and then i'm going to give you my analysis basically of the september data that we saw kind of what i think we're, we're headed towards as we see it here hey my name is jeff chubb i am a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses and i'm one of uh, massachusetts top real estate agents if you have any questions then know i'm going to be your resource for those answers so let's jump into that single family weekly data we had 5392 single family homes on the market this is the ending of a streak a three-week streak inventory went down yes it's only by 14 units but down is down great news for sellers buyers eh, you know they might not be too excited about that but 1099 new properties came on the market in the state of massachusetts now the average for new listings for the month of july and august has been 1110 so this is just right there it's pretty much right at the new average if you will there were 1041 homes that went under agreement during the week leading up to october 3rd the four week rolling average has been 1021 units so again we're pretty much right there with that average there were 1260 16 single family homes that sold last week and we always will see a bump at the end of every single month in sales data just more people close at the end of the month in order to lower their closing costs but we had an average sales price of seven hundred and sixteen thousand dollars with a median sales price of seven hundred and thirteen thousand now that months of inventory which is the gauge to figure out hey how hot is that market it did grow to 1.4 months versus the 1.35 months that we saw last week. But again, as I have said, if we limit it and only look at the last two, two months of sales data, we really see a different picture of a little bit softer market um, it's just that technically you're not supposed to do that the whole idea of months of inventory is a more longer time time period right but i think that that is a better indicator for our market because the market has been slowing down both in single family as well as condos and by the way don't be that guy hit subscribe let's jump over to the condo market where we had 2,788 condos currently on the market. This is a one unit gain week over week. One unit, <laughs> there are 499 newly listed condos this week. The average amount of condos listed in July and August has been 423. So we're a little bit above average, by about, well, not a little bit, 18% week over week, we're above average. Uh, there were 378 condos that went under agreement. This is compared to the July and August moving average of 409. So we're slightly below average there at 7.5% below in regards to our pendings. We saw 433 condos sell in the state of Massachusetts last week for an average sales price of six hundred and one thousand dollars meanwhile the median sales price was four hundred and ninety two thousand dollars now again that months of inventory in the condo market shifted to 2.06 months compared to last week where it was 1.9 months but you know if you really shrink this down to that two month data we're actually getting close and we're teetering on that seller's market and moving over to the equal market where buyers really have a decent amount of buying power that is what we're seeing in the condo market when you compare the condo market to the single family market the condo market is definitely a little bit weaker than the single family market are you interested in my top 10 markets that might possibly see home prices decrease if the market continues to slow down a lot well then then I have a video at the end of the screen that I released on Friday at the end of this movie I should say that you should definitely check out if you're interested in that but let's first jump over to that mortgage market so we got some relief in the mortgage market finally it was a little bit of a heartburn of a week where we ultimately saw interest rates increasing till about the middle of the week and then we saw some uh, rates start to decrease towards the end of the week and then we saw the rates continue to decrease on Monday and so far on Tuesday we've continued to see the interest rates decrease as well so all great news but why is the big question and we really have to go over the pond over to the UK to figure out what is going on so their, their equivalent of 
our Fed chair and our Fed um, has been a tough talker line. You know, we're going to squash inflation no matter what. No matter what the cost, we're going to get inflation down. Well, he sounded just like our idiot, I mean, esteemed economist Jerome Powell here in the U.S., tough line talker, right? We're going to continue jacking up interest rates. But here's the thing. His counterpart in the U.K., they started to see some crumblings in their economy, and he blinked in that game of chicken. So what happened? Pension funds in the U.K. were in a lot of trouble because bond prices have been tumbling. So what the U.K. ultimately did is they stepped in with quantitative easing where they are now buying bonds in order to stimulate this economy and provide a pricing floor to ultimately provide support to those pension funds. Why does that matter? It's because the pension fund issue, it's not just a UK issue. It's a whole world issue, even here in the US. So those are things that we really need to keep in mind. So it's, you know, many will say, well, who cares about the UK? The answer to that is the financial markets really do because you know what the big money is now betting? The big money is now betting that by quarter one of 2023, we're actually going to see quantitative easing here in the U.S. That is what they're making the bets on. So basically, if you kind of think of it this way, for pretty much this entire year, the Fed has just had their boot to our necks and just been strangling us. And then really quickly, they're going to go to, hey, throwing us a party and giving us a bunch of money. I mean, that's basically what's going to happen here. In other words, they might have just gone too far. Take a look at this article from Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae is now expecting interest rates to be 4.5% in 2023, which is a huge departure from our interest rates of, you know, 6.5, 6.7, 7 7% that we're seeing today. Basically, what everybody's aligning out to seeing and saying is that 2023 is going to be a really interesting year um, where we're going to see some really big changes, but most likely going the other way. And, you know, the kind of the best way that I say it is, is the U.S. economy, it's kind of like the Titanic. We have been quantitative tightening. We've been increasing interest rates in order to get this Titanic to start turning away from the iceberg. But the question has now become, have we overcorrected? And now we're going to start missing this inflation iceberg. And now we're headed to the severe recession iceberg. That's a huge question. Hopefully, we're going to get the soft landing that we've been promised. But time will surely tell. But it's not just the UK news. You also need to look at the Institute of Supply Management survey where they actually came out and said that new orders, employment, as well as prices decreased in the month of September. Employment is the big one because inflation hawks have continued to say that until employment starts cracking, right? Until we start seeing the shoe drop in the employment sector, you're not ultimately going to see inflation come down. And I truly believe that you're starting to see that employment shoe drop. I mean, there's the ISM survey, right? But let's take a look at these companies and what they're doing. I mean, these are some pretty big name companies. They're bringing people back into the office. I kind of believe that this is a natural way, progression for them to lower their headcounts. And once they have exhausted lowering their headcounts in this way, because maybe some people have moved away or maybe some people just don't want to go back into the office, then at that point, that's when you're ultimately going to see the layoffs happening because you are seeing companies buy less preparing for this recession. They're starting to dwindle down their inventories. They're ordering less, as you can see in that ISM survey, right? We're starting to see the makes of a big recession here. And again, the question becomes, is are we going to be able to give, provide ourselves a, uh, a soft landing like Jerome Powell has promised so many times? So let's turn to the single family September data where there were 5,473 single family homes on the market as of the end of September with an average asking price of 1.1 million. This is compared to September of 2021 where we had 5,047 single family homes on the market for an average asking price of $979,000. Basically, this means that inventory went up by about 8.4%. Meanwhile, um, 
prices went up by 12.4%. The average asking price, I should say, went up by 12.4%. There are 4,204 homes that went under agreement in the month of September for an average asking price of $688,000. This is compared to September of 2021. We saw 5,515 homes go under agreement for an average asking price of $636,000. Ultimately, this means demand was down by 23.8% in the single family sector. Um, if you want to kind of get ahead of the the, the news curve, if you will. Keep in mind that our pendings for September, this equates to sales in October. So that's where we're headed for next month is the pendings for this month. And what's been interesting is, you know, there's been a lot of news where quite a few pendings have gone and fallen apart. So it's just going to be some really interesting data that we're going to ultimately be looking at in the month of October. There are 4,268 single family homes that sold in the month of September uh, here for an average uh, sales price of 705000 Meanwhile, if we compare it to September of last year, there were 5,115 single family homes that sold for an average sales price of $651,000 for sales decreasing by 16.6%. Meanwhile, prices actually went up by 8.26%. And in the condo market, and there was some really, really, really big news here. We had 2,816 condos on the market at the end of September for an average asking price of $1,057,000. This is compared to September last year where we had 3,184 condos on the market for an average asking price of $890,000. So inventory is actually down by 11.6%. Meanwhile, prices... Um, the average asking price is up by 18.8%. So, so in the pendings, we had 1,646 condos go under agreement in the month of September here in Massachusetts for an average asking price of about $636,000. This is compared to September last year where we had 2,410 condos go under agreement for an average asking price of $596,000. So this means that buyer demand was down 31.7% in the condo market for the month of September. And so when we moved to the sales data, we saw 1,513 condos sell in the month of September for an average sales price of $586,742. This is compared to September of last year when we had 2,274 condos sell for an average sales price of $606,113. So sales were down 33.5% in the month of September and prices were down by 3.2% year over year. And this is the first time we have seen year over year data where we have actually seen prices going down. Now, this doesn't mean that prices are down 3.2% for the whole entire year. No, no, no. This is just one month. And ultimately, this is what we're going to expect. We're going to expect to see, hey, some months prices are below, some months prices are above, right? That's where we're ultimately going to get that stagflation where we're not really going to see home prices going up or down. That's my opinion of what's going to happen. But all this really makes sense because for the last couple of weeks, we have really been talking about how that condo market, we actually just mentioned it a couple of moments ago, how the condo market was teetering in between the, the, the seller's market over to the equal market. Buyers, they're getting more pricing power in the condo market, which ultimately means that, you know, prices they're going to be the equal market, right? Prices are going to be about equal. They're not going to go up. They're not going to go down. That is what we're seeing in the condo market. The condo market is definitely the weaker market in the state of Massachusetts when you compare it to the single family market. Kind of say it another way. If you're looking for the best value right now, you could probably find that in, and talking very broad here, but you could probably find that in the condo market. So here are my thoughts in regards to the September data. The market is softened. There is little doubt about that. Nobody can say that the market hasn't softened, but it hasn't crashed. We had 4,268 single family houses sell in the month of September. And so we'd have to go back to 2014 when we saw 4,008 units sell or back to 2018 when we saw 4,331 units sell in September in order to be kind of within range of the amount of sales that we saw this year. Just for the record, 2014 and 2018 were 
awesome years. So, you know, there's there's truly nothing. That, we're not in crash territory is, is really what I'm trying to say. And, and I 100% expected that we were going to continue to see home prices, you know, the average year over year home prices start to continue to retreat. I mean, take a look at this. In May, they were up 14.98%, right? And then they went down to 10.46% year over year gains in June, then 10.09% in July, 8.63% in August, and now 8.2% year over year increase in the month of September. We're going to continue to see those year over year numbers start to decrease. Again, there is little doubt that the market is slowing. That was the whole point of increasing interest rates. They accomplished their goal. I had somebody say that they think home prices are going to go down by 40 to 50 percent. I'm sorry that I'm not sorry that I do not see this happening. There is just no way that this is going to happen. First off, let's take a look at the historical data here. Home prices went down 19% in the worst correction since the Great Depression. This is not the worst correction since the Great Depression, and I really don't think it's going to be. Also, we're starting to see, well, other you know, governments blinking in regards to the question of inflation or crumbling economy. They're choosing inflation over the crumbling economy and slowing down inflation. And I ultimately think that that's what you're going to see here. You're going to see the Fed step in and support our economy, our housing market. And here's the reason why. Because housing consists of 18% of our gross domestic product. If home prices went down by 40 to 50%, that's an oh shit scenario. That's an oh shit scenario where most likely you don't have a job because again, it housing contributes to nearly a fifth of all of our economic output. You don't want housing prices to go down by 40 to 50 percent because if they do, we're all in a lot of trouble. So, you know, for those people out there really thinking 40 to 50 percent housing correction prices is what they're going to see, I really ultimately really try to think about what that really means from an economy standpoint. It isn't pretty. And if that's where you think the economy is going to go, then that's fair enough. I'd continue to wait there. But as we see it, especially here in Massachusetts, I just don't see housing prices going down anywhere remotely close to there. I continue to believe that we're going to see stagflation. I continue to believe some markets are going to perform worse than others. I continue to believe that for the long part, you know, we're not necessarily going to see in prices increase, but we're also not going to see them really fall too much either. So um, it, it goes back to why are you buying a house? If you're buying a house for the sole reason, because you expect that house to appreciate 50, 60, 70% over the next year or two. Well, then you know what? Housing isn't the investment for you. And most likely no investments out there are quite frankly for you. Housing is really to be bought because you're buying a house because you want long-term stability, okay? You know what your, your payments are gonna be month in, month out. You don't want somebody just being able to kick you out on the street. You don't want somebody being able to jack up your interest rates. It's a little bit of a built-in savings account where each month you're continuing to pay down a little bit of your principal and it, it's your home. I mean, that, that's the big part about it. This, it's the house where I walk in and it's my two girls. It's my home. I own part of it. That's why you buy a house. And, and, and every single time we see these crazy, crazy appreciation, crazy markets, I think people disconnect from the reasoning why we buy these houses in the first place. It's in most cases to buy a home. So, you know, we're going back to some of the normalcy of the market. And I think that, that ultimately in the end, that is a really, really great thing. You have any questions or comments about the market data, then throw them in the comment section below. I always really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. So I'm always going to answer any of your questions or your comments. I'm going to always take that time to do that. Um, questions? about your own market situation, then hey, I love chatting real estate. Uh, but just as a heads up, I do limit the amount of clients that I work with. Um, I don't work with just everybody. So um, if I can't help you, then here's my promise. I'm always going to point you in the direction of somebody that can. That's the important part. Um, but I love talking real estate. So I'd love talking about your real estate goals and how to make that happen. Uh, don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. And can, and can you do me a favor? If you know of anybody who's thinking about buying or selling a house, can you send them this video because the data and the information in the video is just it's so important in order to be an informed person an informed buyer an informed seller because at the end of the day an informed person is a powerful person so until next time